In the last video, we covered a lot of the constraints. These are the rules that we're going to tell Altium, follow these rules. So in case I make a dumb mistake and I make something too narrow or too wide, you can correct me. Or if I'm starting with a new structure, make sure I can make it conform to the manufacturing. It dramatically simplifies the possibility of mistakes. There are two other important constraints that I think are useful to use right at the beginning. The first one is related to the keep out region. Remember when we created the board outline, we said, OK, we need to add a special layer. That was the keep out layer, the, the outline of the board. That's the layer that we're going to send to the board fab. It's going to be included in the Gerber files. We'll see later on. That will tell the board fab, OK, this defines our board. And when you're ready to separate our board from everybody else's on your panel, this is the line, the outline, or the keep out uh, line, is the line you're going to use to run your drill bit around in order to route out our board from everybody else's. And they're going to try to follow the center of that uh, uh, keep out line. And you know, depending on the size of the drill bit, it's, um, it's somewhere between 10 and 15 mils in diameter. And so um, generally keeping it um, a 20 mil wide region uh, will make sure that the, uh, the, the board is cut somewhere uh, in this region. As a visual aid, it tells us, hey, be sure not to have any metal that encroaches into that keep out region because uh, it'll be cut by the blade and that'll help uh, uh, increase the wear on the blade. Fab houses don't like that. So we want to make sure we don't have any metal that gets close to 10 mils from the edge of where we define the board. Now we can do that visually or we can have Altium help us do that by adding a constraint. And here's how we find it. Remember, it's a design rule. So we go to design rules. And now we have a gazillion different constraints to pick from. So here's where that outline constraint is hidden. So if you scroll all the way down, here is manufacturing. We open up manufacturing. And the very last one here is board outline clearance. And this is the rule that's going to tell us, OK, make sure you don't have any metal within a certain distance of the edge. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see anything here. It would be nice if it was a default condition, but it's not. And so we have to add a new rule. So we click Add a New Rule, and here it comes up automatically, the board outline clearance. And you can read the details here. But here's the number that we care about, the generic clearance. And you can see here, it's set for, let's see, 10 mils. Well, that's the one that we want. It comes up default that way. If it's not, you can come in here. I double clicked and you can change these parameters. So this is all the features that we're going to create in metal and how far should they be from the outline edge. And I think a good value is about 10 mils. It um, takes into account all the tolerance variations and won't affect anything. So that means that given the keep out region, we're going to have another gap of 10 mils between the nearest metal and the beginning of that keep out region. And so that gives us good tolerance for variation in the drill bit wander as the board edge is cut out. So that's what I want to keep. Everything else looks fine. I'm going to say OK. Now, and, and that's why you see this gap here of 10 mils between the um, uh, keep out region and the edge of the metal. This metal happens to be the copper fill that we'll talk about in an upcoming video. That's a really important constraint, and it's done for us automatically. There's one other important constraint that I find incredibly useful, and it's related to the through-hole components. Now, when we place a through-hole component into the board, generally we're going to have to solder it. And if that component that pin that we're soldering is connected to ground. As for example, here's our power plug. It's got three pins. One of them is the power pin, and there's our 5 volt. You can see the 5 volt power rail over here. And the other two are ground. If those pins are just connected to the ground plane on the bottom of the board, that copper plane will suck out the heat from that pin quite a bit. And that's going to make it really hard 
to solder that pin into the board. We have to use a really hot soldering iron and get a lot of solder on the tip there and get a lot of thermal mass in order to uh, get the, the pin hot enough to melt the solder before it gets sucked away by that plane. And so to prevent that problem, we want to put a little thermal isolation between the pin when we plug it into the board and when we solder it in and that plane. And the way that we do that was, is with a thermal relief via. And you can kind of see that over here. Um, when this uh, part is placed, the, the blue is the copper plane on the bottom. And the, there's a hole here, and the pin is going to go through the hole. And here's a little annulus corresponding to the uh, a little bit of a, a, a copper trace, or copper metal that is on the, the bottom of the board. And the top over there is the capture pad for the via. And you notice that in this structure of the via, there's a gap, a gap between the copper plane on the bottom and where the via is. And the, it's like, kind of like a moat in which this gap is going to prevent heat flow from the pin when we're soldering it to the copper plane. But we have to make electrical connection, and so we have these moats. This is a little copper tab in the ground plane that connects to the uh, via. And so we have good electrical connection, but there's not a lot of path for the heat to flow. And so this pad is thermally isolated, and that makes it solderable. Its sole purpose is to allow practical soldering, make it easy to do the soldering. That's why we have thermal, thermal relief vias. The only place we need a thermal relief via is where we have a through-hole pin. So we want to set up a constraint that says, OK, for normal vias, hey, let's use um, a direct connection. So for example, here's a via that's connecting to the ground plane from this pad. So there's the, the narrow trace here is going to prevent the pad of the 555 timer is going to sit over here. We're going to solder to it. But this narrow path acts as a isolation, a thermal isolator for the heat flow from this pad to the solid ground plane over here. So we don't need a thermal isolation here. This is a direct connection. And so when we defined the vias, generally we're going to use direct connection vias. But the special case of through-hole vias, we want those to have thermal relief. And here's how we set it up. So again, it's the design rules. So we go to design rules. And now, where do we find that? It's all about the planes, because that's where heat is going to be um, pulled out of any of the vias. So we look under planes. And we look under power plane connect style. This is how we do vias. And you notice, we have it set for direct connection. We don't want a relief, a thermal relief, for vias in the planes for just signal vias. So we want direct connection. We look at the power plane clearance. This is when a via goes through a power plane, for example, and we don't want a connection. This is about that gap. And the default, I think, is like 20 mils. I think that's kind of large for the voltage ranges that we're using. And so I like setting it for 10 mils probably won't have much impact in a two-layer board, may have an impact in a four-layer board. But the last one here is Polygon Connect. And that's what we have as our ground plane on the bottom of the board. We have a, we're going to make that a copper polygon. And so when we open that up, we look at the constraints for Polygon Connect. And you'll notice, well, it's just describing any via to the polygon. We want specific vias. We want through-hole vias. And so you notice this is set for simple. We want advanced. And now when we have advanced set, look, we have the surface mount pad. This is just for a normal via, which we want a direct connection, because rarely is it going to be, are we going to solder anything on that via? Do we have to worry about the thermal transfer to the plane? Making a direct connection is just fine. But for a through-hole connection, that's when we want, as our default case, we want it thermal relief. Because through hole almost guaranteed means there's a pin sticking in that hole. And uh, if there's a direct connection to the copper plane on the bottom where that hole is, we want an electrical connection. We don't want the heat flow out. And so we want thermal relief. And the constraints uh, that I think are 
a good compromise between what's practical and what the fab guys can do is a 10 mil uh, length for uh, the tab. That means a 10 mil air gap and a 10 mil width for the tab. And that means we have basically one square of metal connecting for each one of these tabs. And we'll see in some of our exercises how we can estimate the impact that would have on the resistance. And it's surprisingly small. So those are the two important constraints that we're going to set in addition to the other ones that we have.